This is ABC 15 Mornings. One week since the recycling plant fire that caused the largest response from the Phoenix Fire Department in its history this morning. New insight into how it impacted those people who live nearby. Plus a live look outside over the valley as our excessive heat warning continues. Looks are deceiving right now, but it's going to be a scorcher. I've got to look at your most accurate forecast as we prepare for a week of temperatures above 110. And it is time to rally the valley today. The Phoenix Suns, they're taking on the Nuggets in uh, the game four of that series. ABC 15 sports team, they've got more on what we can expect from today's game, and I'm sure a lot of people have those brooms out yes. hoping for a clean sweep of the Nuggets. Let's do this, sons. We believe in you. We say good morning to you on this Sunday. I'm Nohei Lonnie Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson. And Nohei, I was on a vacation last week and in San Diego. It was a little overcast to start the day and felt a lot cooler, so I didn't have a hat or sunscreen on. I'm already starting to peel a little bit, but <laughs> just a reminder here, there's no doubt where the sun is uh, uh, here, but you've got to um, stay hydrated, yes. keep the sunscreen on, all of those things, and maybe even stay inside with the temps we're looking at. Uh, truly, this week might just be the best idea. You don't have to be a hero about it and go tough it out. No. You know, you can stay indoors, and today watching the suns is a great excuse if you think you need it. It is weather action day as we are starting our tally now of how many times we will hit at 110 plus here in the valley yesterday was day one and we will look to add to that each day this week excessive heat warnings in effect everywhere you see in pink so today it expands to cover just about the entire state seeing higher than average temperatures right now we're in the 80s here in the phoenix metro later It'll be 114 degrees. We do have air quality alerts in effect, and we're also going to be on record watch. So if you're looking to escape and head to the high country, it's certainly pleasant up there this morning in the 40s and Flagstaff 60s across the central and eastern portion of the state. But it will warm up north today, too. It will be in triple digits in Sedona and Payson, the Grand Canyon even warming into the 90s today. And to the east will be in the upper 90s in Shola and mid 90s in Heber. So the heat is coming on statewide, but we'll show you the hottest spots expected today and talk about those records coming up in that full forecast. All right, no, hey, thank you. And we start with some really tragic news this morning. A two year old has died after falling into a pool near McClintock and Warner Road. That's in Tempe. The child taken to the hospital last night in critical condition after he was pulled from the water, but he later died. Now, according to the Arizona Department of Health Services, drowning is the third most common cause of unintentional injury related deaths. The group most at risk children ages one to four years old. The department urging prevention through adult supervision, barriers like fencing around the water and teaching kids to swim or float on their backs. Another tragic story to report a woman found dead inside of a home after a house fire. Those flames breaking out yesterday near 64th Street and Greenway. Fire crews called to the scene after someone saw smoke coming from a bedroom window. A second person was taken to the hospital for breathing in too much smoke. She is expected to be OK so far. No word on what sparked that fire. Now let's turn to our wildfire watch on this Sunday morning. More people who were forced from their homes because of the telegraph fire allowed to return home. Some evacuations now lifted. Neighbors in the top of the world and Oak Flats areas allowed to return home to see what's left, how their house failed or stood, I should say. Electricity also restored in those communities. So far, this fire has burned more than 87,000 acres, but major uh, forward progress this weekend. It's now 76% contained. It was just about 45% contained to start the weekend. Also, the Mescal fire burning near Globe as well, near 82% containment. And so far, it has burned more than 72,000 acres. And it's been a week since the recycling plant fire that triggered the largest response from the Phoenix Fire Department in its history. For residents around there, it was a day living under a constant stream of black smoke. Now, this was the view from Rosa Rodriguez's backyard. For hours, that plume of black smoke nearby, heat and embers, they jumped 35, uh, 35th Avenue, that is, and then ignited four cars, causing about $20,000 worth of damage at an auto body shop. 
It was inside the house too, and the other day it was the same thing. It smelled like a lot of smoke. Yeah, the fire scene has uh, been transferred over to Friedman Recycling, where the fire started. The cause has not yet been determined. Looking ahead, next Saturday is Juneteenth. It's also known as Freedom Day. It's meant to celebrate the day when the last enslaved Amer African American people heard about the abolition of slavery. Friday, the Tempe History Museum is going to be hosting a festival from 7 to 9 p.m. They're going to have exhibits, food trucks, activities for kids, and so much more. It's such a learning uh, activity that you can get into. If you still need to get vaccinated, there will also be on-site vaccinations available. Also on Saturday, Clip Dart will be giving away uh, a haircut, free haircuts for Juneteenth. Clip Dart is an on-demand barber service that wants everyone to have the opportunity to look and feel their best. They're going to be at the Tempe Corps Salvation Army from 9 to 5. Their goal is to bring awareness about the Day of Freedom and offer some hope to the community. Tempe Corps Salvation Army is located on University Drive near Mill Avenue. from the Western Conference Finals. Can't keep talking about it now, we gotta do it. That's the deal right now. Phoenix has come out on fire. You guys are built for this. Booker, oh! he is on automatic. <laughs> Dropping the sledgehammer. We have a real team. At the end of the day, we, we just having fun. Hey, I'm Craig Fui, joined now by two of our local basketball experts to talk about the Phoenix Suns, who are one game away from heading back to the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2010. It's been a long time. Grand Canyon head women's basketball coach Molly Miller, who has an incredible resume. I got to tell you, Molly, in your seven years, I've, I've not seen a record like yours, which is just phenomenal. It is uh, 198 and 20, 24. That's an incredible 890 winning percentage. I don't know any head coaches other than you that have a winning percentage like that. Congratulations. Uh -huh. Congratulations. Thank you. There's a lot of we in those wins. <laughs> I know, but me. thank you for being here with your expertise. And also with us, 10-year NBA veteran, Stephen Hunter, who played center, was a first-round draft pick back in the day, played for the Phoenix Suns, and uh, had a great season here in 2004-2005, all the way to the Western Conference Finals. Thank you, Stephen, for being here as well. Hey, glad to be here. Thanks. we got to talk about this Suns team because I'll tell you what, this thing all revolves around Chris Paul to me, right? That's kind of where we're at with this thing. Chris yeah. Paul's been a phenomenal player for the Suns. He's 36 years old. He's reinvented himself. He's gone on to do fabulous things with the Suns. Steven, let me start with you because you know something about what a point guard can mean to a basketball team, but you got to have that supporting cast around him as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, as I said earlier, whatever uh, Chris lacks in his physical attributes, he totally makes up for it uh, in his mentality and in his game knowledge. I mean, he's, he's just grown as a player and he's at the pinnacle uh, of where you need to be mentally uh, as, a, as a player as, as far as your IQ goes. I mean, he does stuff like this, gets to his spots whenever he, whenever he wants. Uh, he's mastered that little mid-range shot. Um, a lot of young point guards should watch Chris Paul and the way he facilitates and the way he, you know, practices his move, then does them in-game and gets to his spots and, and makes his shots. So, man, like, it's just a perfect piece to the puzzle in terms of, like, getting Chris Paul out there with Devin Booker and Crowder, uh, and a lot of our young guys. Aiden, he's made, he's made Aiden such uh, a much better basketball player. So, uh, Monty Williams has a, has a gem on his hands in this, in this Chris Paul guy. I really hope the Suns uh, re-sign him because I feel he, even though he's 36, he has a lot of uh, great productive years left, left in him. Coach Molly Miller, you played point guard as well. You had some success there in college. What does it mean now as a coach to have a point guard to facilitate things for your team? I totally agree with Steven. I mean, your point guard is your glue. Um, it's the heart of your team. And for, for me, there's value in that as a coach, knowing that they're thinking the X's and O's and the game schemes like you are. And there's value in Chris Paul leading this team with his experience, his fight, his grittiness. Um, he is just getting better with age, which is a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. And he is one that um, you want the ball in his hands with that type of decision making and ball control. He values every possession, which is huge in the playoffs. 
All right, topic number two, you guys, and that is the Nuggets have any fight left in them at all. They're down 0-3, and despite playing in front of their home crowd the other night in game three, it didn't seem to help much. Starting the game with Nikola Jokic receiving the MVP award and pregame ceremonies, they just look like they ran out of gas in the fourth quarter. And get this, the Suns now have tied a franchise record with six straight playoff wins, and no team in NBA history has ever come back from an 0-3 deficit. In fact, those teams are 0 for 142. All right. What do you think, Stephen? Do they have a chance to come back in this series? Well, you know, before game three, I actually uh, thought the Nuggets had a chance. I, I got a chance to play a couple years in Denver, and their home court uh, is, is, is amazing as well. Um, they get you tired with the altitude, and also the fans are, are loud and great. But the Suns have just figured them out. The Nuggets are having a, a really hard time stopping the Suns consistently. Um, we're getting to the middle, getting a lot of wide open threes in the corners and on the wings, and they just look defeated. So, Craig, I'm, I'm going to say they're done. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead, go out on a limb, and say the Suns going to take care of business in Game Four, and we're going to get a lot of rest going into the conference finals. Coach Miller, does it come down to the backcourt between these two teams? I mean, Devin Booker, Chris Paul against. What, uh, Austin Rivers and Facundo Campazzo? I mean, is there a matchup there at all? I know who I'm picking 10 out of 10 times with that one. So I feel good, too. I know a sweep would be nice. I'm ready to get the brooms out. But this is going to be um, a, a battle every game. But I think the Suns is the better team. I think they're the deeper team. And I think they're going to sweep in four. Great stuff, you guys. I appreciate it. That is Grand Canyon head women's basketball coach Molly Miller, 10-year NBA veteran and former son Stephen Hunter. We appreciate your time and your insight. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You know, the Suns have worked a long time to get that right mix of players. And boy, does it just feel like they finally got the magic. Yeah, really. We started to see glimpses of it last year in the mm -hmm. bubble as they went undefeated. Unfortunately, that still wasn't enough yeah. to get them into the playoffs last year. But then the carryover has just been tremendous, finishing second in the West with you know almost the top record in the league. So they should be here with how well they've been yes. playing all season long. Absolutely. It's yeah. their time. You can feel Feel it. All right, still ahead this morning, teaching kids about science. The summer camp at the Phoenix Science Center that's looking to help them fall in love with STEM. Also, we've got an update on President Biden's trip overseas as the G7 summit wraps up today. Also, taking a live look this morning at the Saguaro Library. It's doubling as a cooling station today as an excessive heat warning is still in effect. To find a cooling or relief or water station that's near you, we've made it easy. Head to abc15.com and you'll find that interactive map. We'll be right back with a look at that full, most accurate forecast. Well, with excessive heat warnings now underway, you can expect to see electric bills go up as people use their air conditioner to stay Cool. Well, Credit.com recently looked at some ways that you can save money and still stay cool. They say upgrade your windows to more energy efficient ones, efficient models, and then look for leaks and cracks in the seals of your windows. Programmable thermostats also help uh, adjust those temperatures while you're away from the house or when you're asleep. Next, make sure that you are changing the filter on your HVAC system as needed. And if possible, cook outdoors, do some grilling because running that oven, as you know, or even the stovetop, it can really generate a lot of heat inside. These are just a few tips to keep those summer costs down as we prepare for some dangerous heat this week. No, hey, and when we say dangerous, that is not an understatement or an overstatement. I don't even know yeah. which way you want to call it. It's just, it is dangerous heat. Yeah, we're not trying to be dramatic about it right. at all. It is just the fact of the matter. That's why we have heat warnings in place so people pay extra attention. Want to take a look at that most accurate forecast for you and show you. We already started setting some records yesterday when we hit 110 for the first time this year. Tucson, Safford, and Nogales all setting heat records yesterday. It was 110 in Tucson and Safford, 108 in Nogales. And we're going to be on record watch every day for the next week. We will be at or above the record right on through Thursday when that 
high temperature will hit 118 and the record is 114. It also goes to show that this is typical for this time of year. This extreme heat is right on time for when we typically see our first 110 plus days of the year, but we don't always love to set records. That's for sure. So our temperatures this morning, all the more reason to entice you outside while you can get some of that fresh air while it's still safe and comfortable to do so. We're at 72 degrees in Levine right now, as well as surprise 71 in Ahwatukee, 72 in Gilbert. It's 73 in Apache Junction right now and 77 in those Deer Valley neighborhoods. We'll have very light breezes today in the valley around 10 miles an hour. Uh, more noticeable breezes across the high country today as gusts at times could reach 25 miles an hour, particularly in our northwest pocket of the state. Here's what our warm up looks like hour by hour. It's going to happen more rapidly today than it did yesterday. So once we're in the 80s, we're only going to be there until about 9 this morning. That's when we cross over into the 90s and the triple digits show up before lunchtime today in that 11 o'clock hour climbing from there. Also, our breezes will pick up a little bit more after lunchtime. That's when we'd be closer to 10 miles an hour. 114 is where we'll top out today across the valley in Peoria, Ahwatukee, Mesa and Gilbert, 112 in Santan Valley, 110 in Cave Creek, 109 in Wickenburg. That excessive heat warning in effect starting now through Friday across the valley and it expands to our north, to our south and to our west so that most of Arizona is under this heat advisory. And you can understand why when you look at the high temperatures across the state today. Hottest spot in the state, Lake Havasu City, going to top out at 116 degrees today. That is dangerously hot. We'll be over 110 in Yuma as well as Casa Grande and Safford. Across the central portion of the state, we'll be in the upper 90s and low 100s. Even north of the rim, everyone will get at least into the 90s, if not triple digits. So that means that at the excessive heat it has a very high risk for everyone. It does not matter your athletic ability. Everyone is at risk if you don't have adequate means of staying cool. Lots of water, places of shade. We will stay dry statewide today. A few high clouds will stream in later this evening, and there is a disturbance off to our east that could kick just a little bit of moisture into the far southeast corner of our state, but it doesn't look to be a big rainmaker as we move into Monday. Here in the valley, certainly no moisture in our forecasting. Bone dry as our temperatures now start to climb every single day. The hottest day of the week now looking to be Thursday. 118, so we're coming close to 120 degree temperatures, and even our overnight lows are slowly going to get warmer as we have trouble cooling off each night heading into the next day so that by the end of the week, those morning lows are in the 90s. Now, Saturday, the temperature is at 116. The National Weather Service has not extended its warning yet, but it is likely to do so, and when it does, we'll also add another weather action day so that you take action to stay safe. All right, Noe, thank you, and uh, make sure to download the free ABC 15 app and keep track of those rising temperatures. You can also okay. get your forecast on any of those streaming platforms that are listed right there on your screen. Tempe-based Huss Brewing is opening a new tasting room in downtown Phoenix. Check out these renderings here showing what the place could look like. It'll be located right at the Phoenix Convention Center. Huss is expected to uh, begin construction this summer with plans to open in the fall. EG's is expected to open its first restaurant here in the Valley. It'll be in Gilbert and it will be opening next month, but a specific opening date, it has not been announced just yet. EG's is a Tucson staple known for its fruit flavored drinks. Uh, this weekend, they're hosting a job fair to fill 60 open positions, but you can also apply online. We have more information under this story at abc 15 Dot com have never been there, so it'll be interesting to try that place out. All right, still ahead, at least 25 states, including Arizona, preparing to drop enhanced unemployment benefits. How many millions of Americans this is expected to impact? That's coming up. Last summer, a lot of parents struggled to figure out how to keep their kids occupied because the pandemic was closing so many camps. A lot of them coming back in person this year, and that includes the Arizona Science Center. So Allison Smith is joining us this morning to also talk about why they're keeping their virtual camps going as well. Hey, Allison, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm great. So there are a lot of parents who still want that in-person you know, option, but then there are an equal amount of parents who still need the virtual option. Is that why you guys are still doing that? 
Definitely. So we do have our in-person camp options this summer. They've returned. We're very excited to be back. And then we kept our virtual options. So we have heard feedback from some of our families that they still want to keep their campers at home, but they still want to have those engaging STEM experiences this summer. So our virtual camps allow for that. Our virtual camps are uh, shorter sessions done through Zoom, uh, and they include a kit of materials that can either be picked up at the Science Center or sent to their home. So that way they still have that hands-on engagement even if they're not ready to come back in person. Yeah, you guys did have, you know, kind of a year of doing everything virtual yourselves to kind of tweak this and find what works. So the kids at home can expect to be doing experiments, even though they're virtual. Yes, so just because they're virtual, that does not mean they're not engaged. So that virtual engagement, it's important that they still have that hands-on component. So they're doing the activities with the instructors. They're given different challenges to complete. Uh, two of our themes this summer for our virtual camp, we have a chemistry camp and we have a uh, build it engineering camp. So different activities that they can be engaging with at home, both during the live Zoom call, but then they're given different resources to also complete uh, additional activities at home if they would like to. So if people want to sign up, how do the camps work? Does it go all summer long? Does it go weekly? Yes, so our camps run during the months of June and July. So every camp is a one week session. Uh, we started on June 7th and we're going all the way till July 30th. So there's plenty of time uh, for camps. All the information can be found on our website, azscience.org. And if there are parents who are wanting to do the in-person, I know it's full right now, but is there a wait list option? There is. So we are full at the moment, but we do have a wait list. So any family still interested can give us a call and uh, get added onto that wait list. So if any spots open up, they can still join us in person. And I'll also add that we never want cost to be a barrier. So we do have scholarship options available for both our virtual and in-person camps and that scholarship applications on our website as well. And if parents are afraid, oh, I'm, we're leaving for a lot of summer because we got to escape the heat. But, you know, we love the Arizona Science Center camps. Do you guys have plans to keep it going like how you used to during other school breaks now? Yes, so school break camps will return this year as well. So we will be planning a fall break, winter break, and spring break camp. So you can keep an eye out on our website for those. Awesome. Such an amazing resource. Allison Smith from the Arizona Science Center. We really appreciate what you guys are doing for the community and to keep these kids engaged and learning in STEM activities. Definitely. We want to keep them engaged in that hands-on learning. Our mission is really to educate, engage, and inspire kids. So we want to do that during the summer as well. Sounds like a lot of fun. Well, still ahead, Rethinking Policing, the police department finding success using martial arts to reduce excessive force complaints and injuries. ABC 15 investigates if a similar program could work with Valley officers.